This is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. Well, this is not how the administrators, teachers, and students of the Houston Independent School District would have envisioned for the end of the school year. Instead of classrooms and pomp and circumstance, the district was more associated with being a delivery source for food for those in the district and for online classes to finish the year of the pandemic. So what's next? So many options and so many questions for HISD. Interim Superintendent Dr. Granita Lathan is here to talk about some of that. Thank you for joining me. Dr. Lathan, it's always good to see you. Maybe not so much in this kind of scenario virtually, but talk about the challenge that, um, that it's been for you and your team as the reality of the pandemic hit. Thank you, Kimbrell, for the opportunity today. Number one, I wanna first uh, start by recognizing all members of Team HISD, our students and our parents. I wanna thank them for just stepping up uh, over the past two months. Uh, it's been very difficult for all of us, not only myself personally, but also professionally, because you're right, uh, we're at the end of the school year, and today and Monday would have been days that I would be out all across this district uh, visiting with our principals and our teachers and students, and we would be preparing for our graduations um, that would be held face-to-face. -face. It's been difficult, but I will tell you, our staff members, especially our principals and teachers, they have just been outstanding. And to our honorary teachers, I'm calling all the parents in, in the city of Houston as our honorary teachers. Okay. They've done a phenomenal job of meeting the needs of our students. Now, am I worried about um, academic loss uh, over the past two months? Most definitely. And we will develop a plan to support our students when we return, uh, when they return in the fall. What's the, what kind of scenarios are you looking at? What processes are you looking at back in school in person or are you looking at online or a combination of all of that we're looking at a combination of course we're prepared of, of to be face to face um kind of worried that we will not be able to fully implement face to face with all students and all staff on august the 24th which is our scheduled return date we're also looking at a scenario where we still continue to be a hundred percent uh virtual and we're prepared to do that through our HISD at home learning platform. And we're also prepared to bring students in uh, in smaller groups where half of the class is actually face-to-face -face with a classroom teacher, the other class is at home learning online. And so, so we're looking at just various options. Mm -hmm. We are also looking at opportunities where some of our teachers might even end up staying at home uh, for whether it's medical reasons or just that fear of returning um, as it relates to the concerns around the virus or the spreading of the virus. So we're trying to be pre get prepared for various scenarios. We, virtual learning has actually been a part of HISD for a while. People may not have known that just kind of what level, but certainly never to the level where it is, has been this past year. What role do you think online learning is going to play uh, in the summer, for example, as you get ready for the fall? Are you doing summer classes online? Yes, our virtual summer school launches on June the 8th. It runs from June the 8th through July 2nd. For virtual summer school, we've identified 40,000 students that will have actual live interactions via the computer uh, with a classroom teacher. All other 160,000 students in the district are encouraged to also take advantage of HISD at home summer enrichment opportunities. And so actually all of our students have an opportunity from June the 8th through July 2nd to continue uh, on, with online learning. After July 2nd, we will have paper packets available for all of our pre-K through eighth grade students. We'll be mailing those out or students will be able and their families to pick them up from their school sites. And then from July 2nd, basically into the start of the school year, they will have an opportunity to just continue with academic instruction also. So as you start to make these plans for all this going on now, uh, what is their date that you will have a no-go kind of decision date that you have to decide, okay, we're gonna go back into class or we're gonna be online. Uh, or what's gonna determine whether you whether or not you do those things? Great question. Uh, I kind of our no-go and, and drop that dead date is we're trying to have everything kind of finalized, hopefully by the middle of June. And the reason I say hopefully is we're waiting for some guidance from TEA as it relates to how funding um, could possibly look in the fall if let's say students are 100% uh, parents make the choice for students to be 100% uh, online. Uh, and so we just want to know, because we have to, of course, build our budget and be prepared for that. Mm -hmm. And then how will we track attendance if we if students are learning virtually at home? And so those are decisions that uh, are, we're waiting for that uh, guidance to make some final decisions. But we're also waiting on health and medical guidance as well. 
not only from uh, the CDC, but also from our city and uh, county health officials. It, you know, it seems like not long ago, the district was dealing with threats of a takeover by the state. No one's talked about that in, in a while. And I'm wondering now, is that on the back burner? That, is that still a threat to, you, to the HISD? What's going on with that? And if so, how are you handling that? As it relates to a possible TA takeover, that uh, particular situation is working its way through the court system. Uh, and so the district and the state, are, we are involved in a, a, a litigation. And so that is, is working, in, in, like I said, throughout the court system. Uh, is that something you just don't even think about as you push forward with what you're doing now with educating your students? All right. I mean, you can't. You have to focus on the children. That, uh, you know, I, I serve 210,000 students. So I have to focus on those students. I serve an additional 27,000 employees. The, those uh, students and staff members, that's my focus right now and ensuring that we can safely bring everyone back to school in August. You know, I looked at, um, I started the segment off, we showed lines of cars uh, lining up for food and, and talked about the fact that many people may not have known that you played such a big role as far as provisions uh, of food for children throughout. Uh, it's been a big part of what HISD is offered. Talk about how important that has been and why you have continued to do that. Even into the summer, you plan on doing some of that, correct? That is correct. I will tell you back in March when we were making the decision and, and my team and I, we were planning and, and you know trying to make decisions around school closure and extended closures. That was one of the first questions that we were asking and wrestling with is how will we continue to feed our children? It wasn't the hesitation of saying uh, of wanting to close schools. It was a worry about children being hungry. And so that's why we partnered with the Houston Food Bank. And I'm very thankful we have, oh gosh, it's, they're great partners that we were able to feed families. On June 1st, we moved to uh, 68 sites where we will be providing meals for uh, students and there'll be th meals for three days at a time. And so students and families can pick those meals up on Mondays and Fridays from designated locations across the district. We're initially starting with 68 campuses. We will be adding additional campuses to make sure we cover you know, the entire footprint of our district uh, so that we won't, don't miss any students. Um, during the summer. I want to back up to th something we talked about in the virtual part of what we're doing here. There are a lot of students within HISD who don't have access to computers. What kinds of things are you doing, trying to do, to make sure that the kids who don't have access will somehow have access and be able to learn online as well? We're still deploying out uh, laptops and hotspots to our students. We're deploying them out across the district, so we're at various locations where parents can pick up uh, the devices. We're getting ready to send out another survey to just uh, find out additional information for parents, not only as it relates to technology, but also their social and emotional needs and whatever ty other types of assistance that they might need in order to continue to, uh, you know, deal with this, um, deal with the issue around uh, the co COVID-19. Dr. Lathan, it's always good to talk to you because uh, I, I always know that your passion is you wear it on your sleeve and your chest, as you say, I lead virtually. You're always thinking about that. Thank you for what you're doing. Good luck as you forge ahead to, to try to do what you can to educate the students of our community. We appreciate you. Thank, Thank you so you. much.